I know I'm continually suggesting that a lot of the rules of life we internalize actually get in our way when it comes to growing and prospering and essentially getting along with our fellow man. But there are certain cases where our rules, even when different, can bring us together. You've heard me say and write that your upbringing doesn't match mine. So your understanding of a situation, its rightness or its wrongness, is most likely not going to match mine exactly. And that can become a problem. I've often spoken about cultural differences that compromise productive communication between individuals, departments, companies, or even countries. It's amazing how the slightest modification to a situation can set someone off just because, in their mind, it's not good or right or even fair. There are thousands of ways for us to disconnect. But there are rules of life similar enough between individuals especially those from similar cultures and backgrounds that can provide mutual respect, bonding, and even love. Holidays give us a platform to slow down and enjoy these. First, for the most part, over a holiday period, we're not focusing so seriously on judging others. We try to be, as they say, in a good mood. What helps us do this is not being challenged by everybody else's judgments, but some meetings fare better than others, I've observed. A holiday like Thanksgiving has the likelihood of bringing together extended families. These might be folks who haven't seen each other for years. Children have become adults. Parents are now seniors. Seniors are now in nursing homes. So at the outset, there can be a lot of judging. She looks so old. It's so sad her husband left her. He was a some bitch anyway. What's that metal thing sticking out of your eyebrow, son? But put the food on the table, and there's a reason they call it comfort food. And a great deal of that angst can go away. I recently attended a Paul McCartney concert here in St. Louis. 20,000 fans, ranging in age from 6 to 75, filled the local venue. McCartney, now 70 years old, gave the crowd almost three solid hours of comfort food music. He's so prolific in his music, both songwriting and performing, that there was hardly a single tune that most of this crowd heard that they didn't already know and love. Comfort food music. I bet when you put a music list together for your iPod or Android, you pick your own personal comfort food music. And so it is with Thanksgiving dinner. Comfort food food. When the smell starts wafting out of the kitchen, the living room rhetoric begins to recede. When the potatoes and the green bean casserole hit the dining room table, all the combatants start working their way to the scene of the meal. A truce is called until everyone is comfort fooded out. There can even be pumpkin pie or cranberry sauce. You have your own playlist for Thanksgiving dinner. And you know what? Even though I grew up in New Jersey, and you probably didn't, I'd come over to your place today and totally enjoy your comfort food, as I'm pretty certain you would enjoy mine. We'd easily forgive each other if it didn't absolutely match the template set by our mom's table. Somehow we're not militant about right and wrong when it comes to comfort food. Well, except I probably won't eat your mom's fine homemade cranberry sauce made from scratch. See, my mom never got the hang of that. I want that sugary cylinder stuff that plops out of a can. I'm Kim DeMott, corporate co-driver with tongue planted firmly in cheek. Happy Thanksgiving. And this is another moment of clarity.